Shapes of molecules. Methane can be drawn like this in a dot and cross diagram. We have carbon surrounded by four hydrogen atoms. Or we can represent it like this, a displayed formula. However, both of these diagrams forget to take something into account. And that is that we live in a three-dimensional world. So the same methane molecule that we have on the left, in reality, would look something like this. A three-dimensional model. Okay. And we can represent that three-dimensional model with this diagram. So as you can see, there are some differences between the one on the right and the one on the left. Most notably, we have dashed lines and wedge lines. So what do these represent? A wedge line represents a bond that is coming out of the plane of paper and towards you. A dashed line represents a bond going away from you. And these flat lines represent bonds that are neither going away from you or coming towards you. So they are in the plane of paper. Now in this video, we're going to learn how to draw these molecules. And it comes down to two simple steps. Step one, we have to identify how many electron pairs there are around our central atom. And this includes bonded pairs or lone pairs. In step two, we're going to select the shape from the shapes table. And this is going to require some memorizing which in my opinion is the most difficult part of this topic. Okay, so what we're going to do now is practice identifying how many electron pairs we see in the central atom. So starting with methane, we can see there are four bonded pairs of electrons around the central atom, which is in this case carbon. One, two, three, and four. There are no lone pairs, so that means in total, there are four electron pairs in this molecule. Let's do another example with water. So with water, we have two bonded pairs around the central atom, which in this case is oxygen, one and two. But at the same time, we also have two lone pairs over here. Once again, we have four electron pairs in this molecule. Let's do another example using phosphorus pentachloride, which looks something like this. So there are five bonded pairs, one, two, three, four, and five. No lone pairs, so in total there are five electron pairs. Okay, so now that we know how to identify the number of electron pairs, we're going to go through the different types of molecules and see what they each look like. Starting with molecules that have two electron pairs around their central atom. So here's an example. BeCl2. The central atom is beryllium and we have two bonded pairs and no lone pairs. Now remember, electron pairs are going to repel because the electrons are negative and they want to get as far away from each other as possible. So we can see in this diagram that the two electron pairs are on opposite sides of beryllium. And in our three-dimensional world, this molecule would look something like this. And we're going to represent that with this diagram. The angle between the two bonds is going to be 180 degrees. And the name of this shape is linear. Okay, moving on to molecules with three electron pairs in their central atom. So here's an example of boron trifluoride. Now notice, I haven't filled out all the electrons surrounding the fluorine atoms. I've done this on purpose, but in reality, you're going to have to draw all the electrons. And this molecule would look something like this. And we can draw the diagram in this way. So the angle between the bonded pairs of electrons is going to be 120 degrees. So if you get a full circle and divide it into three sections, you're going to get 120 degrees and that is the bond angle in this molecule. And the name is trigonal planar. Okay, moving on to four electron pairs. So once again, we're going to use the example of methane. We can see that there are four bonded pairs of electrons. 
and methane looks something like this. Okay, now let's talk about the bond angles. So in this molecule, the angle between the bonds is going to be 109.5 degrees. Yes, you're going to have to memorize that. And by the way, it doesn't matter if you show it from here, or if you show it from here, or anywhere. Every single angle is 109.5 degrees. And the name for this molecule is tetrahedral. Now, we're not really finished with the four electron pair section because we could also have a molecule that has three bonded pairs of electrons and one lone pair. This would still fall under the family of four electron pairs. However, the shape will be slightly different. So an example is ammonia. We can see that there are three bonded pairs and one lone pair. And ammonia looks like this. And the 3D diagram is represented like this. Now notice the two dots at the top represent the lone pair of electrons. Remember that all electron pairs push away from each other. However, lone pairs are much more stronger. And as a result, it's much better at pushing the bonds away from itself, meaning that they're forced to come closer together to each other. So in terms of angles, well, we know that four bonded pairs, so tetrahedral, was 109.5. In ammonia, we have three bonded pairs and one lone pair. So for every lone pair, we're going to subtract 2.5 degrees from the angle between the bonded electrons, meaning this will be 107. And the name of this is trigonal pyramidal. The final example in the four electron pairs category is a molecule that has two bonded pairs of electrons and two lone pairs. For example, water. We're going to represent water like this. So once again, if we compare that to methane, which has four bonded pairs, and remembering that for every lone pair, we're going to subtract 2.5 degrees. That means this angle will be 109.5 take away two lots of 2.5, giving us a value of 104.5 degrees. And the name for this is nonlinear, or sometimes referred to as bent. Moving on to five electron pairs. So like the example we done earlier, phosphorus pentachloride has five bonded pairs of electrons. And it looks something like this. And we can represent it using this diagram. Now this molecule is a little bit more difficult because it has two bond angles. First of all, imagine that these three chlorine atoms are on the same plane. So we have a circle and they divide that circle into three sections, which means the angles between them will be 120 degrees. Then we have two chlorine atoms, one that's going above this plane and one that's going below it. And the angle between them and the plane is 90 degrees. So that means there are two angles, 120 degrees and 90 degrees. And this shape is called trigonal bipyramidal. Now another variation of five electron pairs is four bonded pairs and one lone pair, such as this one which looks something like this. And we can represent that using this diagram. Now this looks similar to the previous one, except that one of the bonds has been swapped by a lone pair. Now remember, the lone pair is going to push everything closer together. So these two fluorine atoms, which would have been 120, are now 102. Now you might think, how come it's not 2.5 degrees closer? And that's because the 2.5 degree angle principle only applies to the family of four. So for this one, you're just going to have to memorize it. And also we have 86.5 between these two. So this molecule with its two different bonds is called seesaw. That's right, you heard me, seesaw.
Okay, next example. Three bonded pairs and two lone pairs. Such as this molecule, which looks something like this. And we're going to represent it with this diagram. So, the angle between them is 87.5. And this is called T-shape. And the last example for the family of five is two bonded pairs and three lone pairs, such as this. And this molecule is going to look like this. So let's think about angles here. Now remember, this is based on the family of five. So using phosphorus pentachloride as the starting point, we know that the three chlorine atoms which are on the same plane can all be replaced by three lone pairs of electrons. So if we put the three lone pairs of electrons like that, that means the only angle going to be left is 180 degrees. So this molecule is also called linear. Okay, moving on to the family of six electron pairs, such as sulfur hexafluoride. Notice that there are 12 electrons around the central atom here. We're used to seeing a maximum of eight. However, this is an exception, and this rule is called the expansion of the octet. And sulfur hexafluoride is a very common example, so make sure you memorize it. So what does it look like? Sulfur hexafluoride looks something like this. Now in this molecule, we can see that the angle is going to be 90 degrees. And it's everywhere. It doesn't matter which angle you look from, it's always going to be 90. And this shape is called octahedral. Okay, five bonded pairs and one lone pair. This molecule is going to look like this. And here we have the 3D diagram. So you can think of this molecule almost like a pyramid. These four fluorine atoms will make the base and this one will make the apex. So the bond angle in this molecule is going to be 90 degrees and it is called square pyramidal. Next example is four bonded pairs and two lone pairs, such as this. Now this one's a little bit strange. So let's see what it looks like. So we can see that two bonds are coming towards us and two are going away from us. And once again, the angle is going to be 90 degrees. And it's called square planar. And that was our last example. So if we summarize all of that, we have this table, our shapes table. Now it's going to take some time to memorize this. However, I've got a link in the description of the video so you can download it and print it out and try to memorize it. Now a couple of extra points. Double bonds represent one electron pair, even though it contains four electrons. So for example, if we look at carbon dioxide, we can see that we have one double bond on the left and one on the right. So how many electron pairs would you say there are here? We would still say there are two electron pairs, one and two. So carbon dioxide would look like this. Now what shape would we have here? So we can see from our table that if a molecule has just got two electron pairs and nothing else, it will have a linear shape with a bond angle of 180 degrees. Some more extra points. In terms of repulsion, we know that lone pairs are much more powerful than bonded pairs. And we saw in our examples that whenever we had a lone pair, it pushed the bonded pairs closer together. However, a double bond is also stronger than a bonded pair. And finally, a lone pair and a double bond have the same repulsion. So let's use that to do an example. We know that if we have three bonded pairs of electrons, such as boron trifluoride, we're going to get a shape that has an angle of 120 degrees. This is because all of the bonds equally repel each other. Now, let's say that we swap one of the bonds for a lone pair. 
Would the angle between the two fluorine atoms become greater, smaller, or stay the same? We know that a lone pair has stronger repulsion, so it's going to push these two fluorine atoms closer together. And therefore the angle will be less than 120. However, what about this? We have one lone pair and two bonded pairs. So, would the angle between the two oxygen atoms be 120, greater than 120, or less than 120? Since we said that bonded pairs and lone pairs have the same power in terms of repulsion, we can say that they all repel equally, and therefore it's going to be the same as the first example, 120 degrees. To finish off, we're going to do some examples of charged compounds. Let's start with this one. So first of all, we're going to draw our central atom, which is going to be carbon. Carbon has four electrons, however this compound has a positive charge. That means we're going to have to remove one electron. Then we have three hydrogen atoms and we can join them together like this. So this molecule has three bonded pairs in its central atom. If you look at our shapes table, we can see that this would fall in this category. Trigonal planar with an angle of 120 degrees. So this would look something like this. Let's try another example, ammonium. A nitrogen atom has five electrons in its outer shell. Because it's positively charged, we're going to have to remove an electron. So now we have four. And now the four hydrogen atoms can join together. So this molecule has four bonded pairs and no lone pairs. Again, looking at our table, we can see that it would fall under this category. Tetrahedral with an angle of 109.5. And it would look like this. And don't forget to put the brackets with the charge. So in this video, we covered shapes of molecules and we created a shapes table, which you can memorize to help you with further questions. Hey guys. If that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.